one of the uh, one of the targets. Why one of the reasons why foreign companies came to, to Russia? Do they know that uh, there are a lot of dangers in this market? And uh, by the way, um, I have also many questions. For example, to some practices uh, and to some positions of uh, different uh, countries towards the uh, situation with corruption in Russia. Uh, you know that. Uh, I know that uh, recently in some European countries uh, su such a law has appeared and you have in the United States uh, the law is Foreign Corrupt uh, Practices Act. Uh, yeah, it sounds like this. Uh, but unfortunately, uh, the state demands from the company uh, to give fewer, not to give bribes abroad. Uh, but it will be much better if the state simply uh, demand uh, not to enter this market, yeah? Because uh, if they demand not to uh, to be involved in these practices, in these controversial practices abroad, it will be impossible for the company uh, to do anything in, on the Russian market in particular. Uh, when the foreign company came on the Russian market, uh, it acts according to local rules. Fortunately or unfortunately, but uh, they will not have effective business if they will not act according to local rules. And uh, this Foreign Corrupt Practices Act, uh, I consider it to be also a very controversial thing. I can explain you why. Uh, for example, uh, we have, you have this Daimler case, yeah, recently. Uh, the Daimler AG agreed that uh, they gave bribes uh, to get kickbacks uh, to get these contracts in Russia and in some other countries. Uh, after the company agreed with these accusations, uh, they paid some certain fee, millions a of fine. dollars, a fine, yeah, uh, to the budget of the United States. And the case was closed. Uh, they never disclosed the names of the person uh, who took the bribes there, you know, the Department of Justice of the United States, they knew this, uh, this officials and they have all the information in the documents uh, who really owned these companies, uh, where money came, uh, who took money from the accounts, uh, in foreign banks, uh, the money from time they were transferred as kickbacks. Uh, unfortunately, in Russia, no, when we have the only opportunity to somehow uh, to uh, attack these corrupt figures, uh, these corrupt officials, is the only opportunity for us uh, is to publish their names. But we can't, uh, we can't do it uh, because uh, in the United States you, do, doesn't, you do not disclose this information. The state do not disclose this information. I understand that uh, different states have national interests. It is not uh, a task for the United States to struggle with corruption in Russia. Uh, but uh, it looks like a deal. You can pay some percentage uh, from this corruptive deal you have in Russia. And uh, we will just close the eyes and never mention uh, these figures in any reports. And you can do the business with them uh, in the future. In the future, yeah. Uh, then it's not a struggle with corruption. It's uh, just a percentage from corruptive deal to the budget of the United States. Uh, it looks like this. Hi, I don't have a very loud voice, but I'll try. Um, I'm Heidi Brown. I was at Forbes for 11 years, and I worked in Paul, and I covered Russia. And um, I just wanted to ask you something. Whenever I would meet with entrepreneurs or people in the finance sector, the first question I'd always get was, why do people in the U.S. media write such negative things about Russia all the time? Why don't you ever write good news? There's so many great things happening here in business. We have all these young people and software. Um, and I just was wondering, you know, they, were, they would literally be genuinely perplexed and frustrated. So I'm just wondering if you have any thoughts about that. We have the same example. Uh, there was a talk uh, in one of the business newspapers in Russia. There was a talk with the Russian oligarch. Uh, he came just for informal discussion. And uh, he asked the same question. Why are you publishing only critical articles and negative information? Uh, can you, for example, publish that this or that official do not take bribes? Uh, and, uh, and it will be a great publication. Uh, 
then uh, one of the uh, of my colleagues uh, from this newspaper he told well but it's uh, well the same that uh, to publish information that Ivanov doesn't kill anybody uh, he's the best person we, we know. You, you know it's not a problem uh, we usually notice uh, critical things when it happens uh, we notice uh, problems and it's our task uh, I'm the head of the investigation section I'm not the head of uh, the section that is writing good news. <laughs> yeah. you it is my task to, to monitor the situation and to find uh, different uh, problems here. Uh, but uh, concerning positive things, uh, there are some positive changes recently. Uh, I, I understand that uh, if comp to, to compare all these uh, well problems that we have in Russia uh, with some positive changes, Maybe uh, the positive changes looks like well nothing, but still we have uh, we have uh, uh, reports uh, from different companies that uh, sooner or later uh, and recently they understood that to attract money from the West they need to be as transparent as possible. Uh, they filed the reports. Uh, they uh, try to uh, and they went. Uh, uh, to London to trade shares, yeah, they uh, became international companies, they attract investors. Um, we have, uh, concerning journalists, uh, finally we have databases that are absolutely legal. Uh, you know that in Russia there are a lot of illegal databases, you can get information absolutely uh, about everything from illegal databases. But uh, there are legal databases now, and you can legally get information about companies, about uh, limited uh, liability companies, uh, about the directors of the companies, about the founders of the companies, and it is good. It is good changes. Recently we have this anti-corruption board that finally uh, well, adopted. Yeah? It is weak now. It is just the start of the process. Uh, of course, uh, the, mm, well, the uh, opposition of uh, officials was very strong. And it was impossible uh, for those who created this law, uh, who designed this law, uh, to make some certain points in it, to have some certain points in it, because uh, it will, well, it will uh, run into uh, serious problems with, uh, okay. with officials. Uh, but so still, we have uh, this uh, this beginning, uh, and uh, I think that uh, uh, in few steps. Uh, maybe it was several or several years, maybe during the ten years, uh, the, the situation will be improving. Uh, by the way, it is not also it is good that businessmen finally uh, understand uh, the danger of the situation and they try to unite in different unions uh, to to struggle against these things and to demand some changes in the law or to make some. Uh, public statements or not public statements that they will not uh, pay bribes to anybody. It is idealistic, uh, but uh, it's a beginning. I suppose that uh, sooner or later, uh, Russian big businessmen and maybe the children of Russian big businessmen who had no sins in their past, they have no criminal activity in their past, and they have nothing to fear about uh, criminal cases. Uh, they will understand that they need much more you know, independent from the to be much more independent from the state. And uh, maybe they will uh, start uh, practices controlling the state and asking for well, a kind of report from the part of the state officials what they are doing and why they are doing this or that. Mr. Perkins. 